Ja, ik kan morgen nog wel in 48 toekomst kunnen. Kijk wat zijn ze. Ik ga niet meer uit de modder komen.
en naar boven. Ja. Deze is ook bijna in de mieren daar hoor. Oh. Dus zo. Gaat hij weer? Daar weer. Ja, ik weet het.
Also, there's been a bit of fishing industry here in Shark Bay for 150 years. And these guys are quite pulling the fishing boats and cleaning up what we call the bycatch. Fishermen quite often get a lot of fish in their nets that they don't keep. That's what we feed them here, we feed them a yellow sun. One thing we are surprised, you know, volunteers probably have the hardest job here is trying to keep people out of a crowd like this. Just so much if you're a frame, you're putting your hand in the air going, pick me, pick me, it makes the job much harder. part about it is we have to spend from 5.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night underwater each day for 10 days and we're five days out, 10 days under and that will last for up to eight months a year and believe me if you reckon that's a glamorous job go give it a go okay. There's nothing like you see on TV like most things. Here he comes. Sorry. Oh. 
Lots of scars on its back. Lots oh, of scars. Beautiful. Wow, that was worth it. So.
leuk. Goed hè? And greens, you will see your blues, purples and some fluorescent colours as you go along, but it is mainly the darker colours. Trying to absorb all the light that they can. So the exact same species here, maybe brown in a shallow or warmer bay, would be more pastely in colour. Who ate it? Uh... Yeah, Nemo. Nemo fish, you haven't seen it. Yeah. shapes and forms that they display. So you've got the plating coral there, you also got uh, the rose or cabbage coral, grain coral, grape coral. She was for the clay fishes. For the clay fishes. For the aquarium fishes. Got them. Hier op de video, door het glas heen. Oh, je bent bij Sterren. Is dat bezig? Nee. Two-wheel drives have been known to get across there when it's been closed for a long time. Uh, but it's been open for about three and a half years now. Prior to that, it was closed for about five years. And it was opened up by a weather event, so by a cyclone. Uh, so we live in a cyclonic area here on the northwest Cape. This is during our summer months, in about a month's time is when cyclone season will kick off. Now here at Yardy Creek, if you can imagine when Puncho came through, the walls of the creek were literally cascading with water. Well, these are quite often mistaken for uh, new shoots of the white mangrove, but in fact they're not. Now these are actually the roots. Now most roots of trees and plants, they grow down and out into the ground as the top of the tree grows up towards the sky. But these roots do something a little bit different. They do start to grow down and then they come right back up again. So what you're looking at is actually the root tips of the white mangrove and they're called pneumatophores. Now there's a very good reason for this. The soil and the mud here at Yardy Creek is very oxygen deficient. This also happens out there in the Mingaloo Reef. Now the roots of the red mangrove, they do grow just a, that little bit deeper into the creek bed here um, and that's to stop them from moving around. So with the tidal movements and when we have cyclones, we also get some very strong storm surges. So just to make sure that these mangroves are not uprooted and float out to sea, uh, then they these little oysters. Now every now and again we also see these little birds that like to catch oysters called... Anyone? Oyster catchers. <laughs> That's where the high tide level ones reach. So as you can see it has fallen. Um, and maybe risen and fallen again, as it has done quite a few times over the history of this area, back to about 30 million years ago. And if you can imagine that this whole area was totally flat, so there was no Cape Range uh, that you're looking at now. And this flat area came marine sediment. But that ancient reef from 30 million years ago is the Cape Range that you're all looking at right now. So it all used to be underwater with lots of corals and marine life around it. Out, have a look it up. Yeah, I have, I've only seen one of them fly out the last few days, so these ones must still just be looking out there. Just Now speaking of rocks, have any of you ever seen a western black-footed rock wallaby? Yeah. 
<laughs> Some of these get where they are. Yeah. They're literally oh, in the middle of the rock wall, yeah. Now they're very agile, so their size helps being so small. They're very good at hopping around the rock walls. They've actually got really long tails. You can't see it on either of these, but their tails are about one and a half times the length of their body, and that helps them counterbalance as they hop around. But one of the best tools that they have is their paws. Because on the bottom of their paws they have soft pads, like cats and dogs. But if you can imagine, um, these soft pads are literally knobbly. So uh, it has been quite successful in controlling them. I don't think foxes will ever be completely eradicated from Australia. But uh, most of these, where, where the wallabies are involved, the baits are placed up the gorge areas. Quite romantic birds, you know, you've got to give them that at least. Now, we do have a couple of bird enthusiasts on board, don't we? Yeah, would you consider yourself a twitcher? Not a twitcher, but Not a, Okay. <laughs> now, if, you, if any of you do know a little bit about these little corellas, you may know that they don't usually nest in rock walls. This is actually quite unique. It's quite unusual. Any guesses? The mangroves, the red and the white, coming from the tropical and the temperate areas, both living here at Yardie Creek, and this is exactly what these birds are doing. And these egrets have been nesting the last few months as well. And they'll produce about two or three chicks at a time. And these chicks will either be completely the grey colour or totally the white. They'll never be a spotty mix of the two. I think a few of you have noticed a little bit more evidence of uh, some birds here in the creek. Maybe some larger birds perhaps. I'll turn the boat around so those of you... But uh, also, you know, if anything should happen to the mum um, while she's out feeding, and hopefully one of the other wallabies in the family group will, will take over handy sometimes. So uh, if, uh, if you're ever out camping anywhere and there's a few nasties around, you know, mosquitoes or midges, if you can get yourself a fire lit and pick the leaves off the white mangrove, put them onto your fire, the smoke will act like a natural insect propellant um, to keep all these nasties away. Now if you don't have any white mangroves around, um, or you're unable to light a fire and you get covered in bites or scratches for whatever reason, and there is something else you can try. Now she's almost just flicked her long tail just over that rock there, but they sit on their tails and so they kind of come out underneath them. They do that for balance. And that's when they get their full on like meditating position going on. It looks like they're deep in concentration. Okay, now booby prize goes to the person who can spot the next one. There you go. So just again to the right, a little bit lower down this time, right in the sun there. Just on that bit of rock sticking out, we've got one. And that I think is definitely a female. Oh yeah. And I
moet hij niet eens heen, moet juist, hij moet eindjes gaan leggen. Daar moet hij heen, kijk maar. Zo, ga maar, ga maar. Ga maar. Kom maar. Kom maar. Wat? Ze zijn binnen van de gronden. Ja.
Toch. Ja, het is beter. Echt door hoor. Moet je... Aanste, die doen het daar eens niet. Ah, não sei, não nada bem. Manda no tempo.
，咁啊两厘嘅。系先生。So if I do film it. Share the point. Hij is gefotografeerd. Ja. Eigenlijk moet je met de boom en dan inzoomen. Dat ze ietsjes verder gaat staan.
So that's the kind of uh, gum tree, yeah. and it's very strong and the straight and solid. And that's the artificial support of this hanging wall. Another usage for this timber is... Oh, come on here, close to me, so that yeah. I can show you the two big holes over there. All right, have a look on top of us, the vertical big hole over there, and that one is right. the exploratory drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> that scared me a lot. <laughs> I never ever have a look at that. I've got a good shot of your back, so... That's alright. Alright, okay, everyone here. Let's... That's mainly quartz rock, okay? See, the rail on the ground. So the rail is actually connected with... It. And um, also, um, yeah, and also, if they don't want to take this job, they just go to the doctor and uh, have the operation to fix this problem. But after that, they cannot take this job anymore.
I'm not used to multitasking. You know? <laughs> 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 that is why I actually asked them. Man, <laughs> <laughs> that noise stops and then the voice comes mm. through. Mm. But unfortunately, Daddy, I think the receiver in here, we've got what the electrician said, there's a loose wire in there, and it kind of just, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. He says, give it a bang. I gave it a bang yesterday. <laughs> Hier. Nee. Het is zo'n een beetje te vinden. Hè? Zou dat een beetje zijn dan? Het lijkt wel een beetje op krokodillen, maar dan op stroop. Daar moeten we nou heen. Daar.
Kijk hier zo naar beneden. Ik denk dat het ook niet lukt. Waar? Kijkje veranderd, dus ik kan niet meer zien.
Oh. Oh, for the Down there, there's a tree, and it's got. But ladies, you just come out in the same boat as husband, and you're probably pretty much five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you've got, you know, all of this has been running around your feet, and you've got a quick plant. And he's asking you to start putting the crossbow the other side. I could tell him. You have been in Holland? Uh, I have been in Holland. Yeah. <laughs> After them.
drin klemmen. Die jongen, die, Staat stil. Ze durft niet verder. Hij durft niet verder. Wat zat hij? Nee, dat is zij toch? Oh, nee, dat zij is veel hoger. Oh. Zo, dat is pittig dan. Oh ja, zij is daar. De dom moet er volgens mij ook wel zijn. Ze is bijna bij die straat. Bij die... Oh, een batterij bij hem leeg. Vijf minuten nog. Wat? Jij ja, niet maximaal vijf personen. growing of these formations is, the, is these really long skinny ones that look like spaghetti right at the back there. Does anyone know what they're called? About the same weight as eight large four-wheel drive cars piled on top of each other. It's a very dense material. And see it yet because we're going to go downstairs and have a closer look. Beautiful flowstone formation called the frozen. Big caveman arms. Alright, so if you want to start making your way down there or get that off to go first, that's it. We'll head down to the next uh, platform. I'll follow you down. Stunning. It's, you've got your normal stalactites, but you've also got some of it sort of bursting out. 
it's sort of hard to explain, but basically that's where water has been seeping, kind of sweating out of the pores in the calcite crystal and then drying. That's why you get this rose coming out. goes towards the next weakest point, and the next weakest point, and so on. So it just goes worming all over the joint. You can see there's just a whole lot of worms squiggling all over the place up here. Some of them just going straight across the roof. They didn't like where they came out, so they're moving over where, they, where they'd rather be. And up behind. Very busy little room. This. This, is, this room's part of the reason the cave got its name. It's like a jewellery box in reverse. All these jewels on the roof. Also in here, there's a sample of calcite crystal. Nou, je zit op de brug. Op de brug. Van de Makere River. Ja. Zocht een zin te doen. Alle
Let me know if you have any questions. Take you out to it in a minute. Okay.
dolphins also too. Yeah. So these yeah. dolphins obviously having no gills and that dolphins straight ahead there you can see that it's not doing much on the water at all. Was it for a minute or all these dolphins on the right hand side are doing it as well now. That's actually in a, a sleep type period. And their sleeping generally only goes for one to two minutes at a time. And they'll shut down half of their brain while they're having that short sleep and keep the other half active so they can be fairly familiar with what's going on. And uh, they're always obvious to their surroundings, such as predators and, and um, so there's quite a bit of sleeping going on there as you can see just with their fin arc back a little bit and, and uh, not doing a whole lot on the water at all for a couple of minutes and then they'll move on again. They just never really stay in the one spot for too long, they're always sort of doing big circles or up and down the rock wall or just, just continually on the move. We can see some nice, you might be able to work out who you're taking photos of, that's a great side on photo there. Work out who that dolphin is. So that's sort of an area where we, we try to stay out of a little bit. We had all everyone's boats in there when they're doing that. But, a bit dangerous for them so we sort of try and stay out of that little corner in there. So we've been able to see a lot of these dorsal fins a bit closer now and you can see the nicks and the marks and everything taken out of them. And there's a full catalogue sitting back here so if you take any decent photos you can have a look here or back at the centre of the photos on the wall. And there's a fair chance you'll be able to match up your photos with um, who their dolphins actually are. See, there's quite a few dolphins back in that little area where they like to like to be. So we'll just quietly head up there and have a look. You can see this one dolphin very close to the beach, only a couple of metres off the beach down there also.
So this is where we did the, the swim this morning, the swim with the dolphins. And what we do is with that, we anchor the boat up and the dolphins in numbers like this, less or more, it's hard to tell. But they generally come up and, and swim with the people in the water. And uh, here it's nice and clear and clean and generally get pretty good interaction. There's a couple more dolphins that look looking like to join this group swimming over, so we'll just stay here for a little while. You can see that one up there upside down. Their vision only generally goes straight ahead and down, so for them to see out of the water, they have to get sort of lift their heads right out of the water and turn upside down.
can tell whether that's a male or a female dolphin. them for long in the yeah. brownie water, can you? You can't. Oh, my. Yeah, can't. Yeah, it right. Oh, well, she's
because this prison has two histories, the convict era and the prison era. In 1829, uh, this was going to be originally a free settlement because the convict system was winding down over east. But 20 years later, the coming and changed the other side of the world, welcome to the wide open spaces of Australia. <laughs> you see, this prison is based on Pentonville Prison in London. Uh, <laughs> 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 Well, no. Your local, you know about the rules. Don't believe about that first. Yeah, vaguely. Uh, uh, two hours later, they found the checks were fraudulent. I think after that, the gold meant that the, the, you know, the routine was a bit more stringent after that. By that time, it had been loaded on a, on a plane at Jandacourt Airport, and it's never been seen again. And um, that was in 1982. 1982. Here, <coughs> yeah, people want to remind. This second yard in the last 30 years was set aside for sexual offenders, rapists and pedophiles. They have to be kept separate from other prisons. They're going to work. Yes. Okay. Some people do feel uneasy about that. If you do get a captive going to Calais, so you can wait in the shade, it's the whipping post. Uh, over on the second floor, for people with wheels, because uh, you don't have steps otherwise. Otherwise, we're going to go through this door, turn left, and take that last door. These gallows were built in 1888. <laughs>
not um, was shut down for 15 years because of uh, litigation. Everything has to be built, and, you know, to help and save the biggest is shop that's the post office. Right? As you can see, the bottom is still for leave, most of it, but luckily the whole five top floors were taken by one another. So they were very, very lucky because I think not, it would have been the right one. Oh, wow.